In this video, I'm gonna be using the Nikon D850 and the Nikon AFS 200 to 500 f5.6 lens. I'm gonna cruise along here. I'm gonna try and shoot some Australian shoreline birds. You know, I was just having a look at all my cameras and lenses at home, and I just realized I don't have anything like a really good telephoto lens, something like at a 500 millimeter or a 600 millimeter uh, focal length. I think the best one I've got is uh, like the 80 to 400. It's a fantastic lens, but there are times where I just need that little bit of extra reach. So I've decided to take a bit of, I guess, a dose of my own medicine. I put up a video a little while ago, <coughs> excuse me, about um, uh, the best way to buy a camera or lens. And so what I've done is I've gone and hired this 200 to 500 to give it a bit of a run and we'll see what I think of it. I'm out here in this beautiful, beautiful location and I did a sunrise here not too long ago and I tell you, the bird life here was just crazy and I can just see them now and they're just starting to go crazy. You can probably see the brightness of the sun coming on my face because the sun's just come up over the horizon. And now's the time to get out and shoot them because they're out feeding and they're looking for their food. And I can see some turns, they're out here and they're diving into the water and hitting it. This whole video is to see how this 200 to 500 goes on this D850. One thing I've already picked up, it's heavy. <laughs> 2,300 grams and you really do have to use it with something like a shoulder strap or with a monopod. Okay, just freeze it there for a second. What a horrible location to photograph birds in. Okay, carry on. It wasn't too long before these sooty oyster catchers flew in and started to feed off the rocks. Sooty oyster catchers are endemic to Australia, common around the Tasmanian coastline and Bass Strait Islands. However, the birds are declared rare in South Australia and Queensland, near threatened in Victoria and endangered in New South Wales. After watching the sooty oyster catchers feeding style and the way the waves didn't seem to really annoy them, I summed up photographically I wanted to shoot them backlit with the rising sun with waves crashing behind and around them. That was really cool. He got his feet wet. Let's see how this one goes. You can see here how the sooty oyster catchers like to use their tough beaks to literally jackhammer off barnacles and shells from the rocks to eat the tasty treats underneath. And here's a heron. A heron's just landed here. This Pacific Reef heron flew in to get in on some of the action. 
I watched and fired off shots as it moved around following the sooty oyster catches, gobbling up any of their leftovers. So the tide's going out and what's happening is it's leaving these little pools of water and so these birds are swooping in and they're grabbing things like, you know, little crabs, any sort of little type of mollusks or anything that they can get and have for their breakfast. I certainly do enjoy having that little bit of extra reach that this 200 to 500 millimeter lens gives me. I was able to get closer to the action while still maintaining a safe distance away so I didn't really frighten or annoy the birds. Well, I've had an absolute blast here this morning with this lens and, you know, yeah, it's, it's a little bit heavy, but, you know, if you've got something like the shoulder strap that you can just, you know, give your arms a little bit of a break every now and again, it does work. I find I get really beautiful, sharp images with it. And combined with the D850, yeah, for the price, it's a very good lens. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. As I always say, never stop creating and I'll see you next time.